Have you ever noticed that if you slice with Cura and then print something, that first the heated bed heats up and then the hot end and then it starts printing? But with Prusa Slicer, they both heat up together and start your print a lot faster. So I wondered if there was a way to do that in Cura. Turns out there is. And I'll show you how to do it on today's Filament Friday. Filament Friday is brought to you by these Patreon supporters. To show this, I'm just going to take my Chep Cube here in Cura 4.3. I'm going to use a Creality Ender 3 profile, which comes with the Cura software. I'm going to slice this at a magic 0.28 my profile, and it says 22 minutes, so we're going to save this file. And it's a G-code file, so I'll save it on my computer. And now let's print it. I'll take that G-code file, put it on the SD card, select it here, and it'll start to heat up. And you notice right away that there's 50 degrees on the bed and it starts to heat up, but the hot end is at zero. It's not starting to heat up. This is the normal process. And this is because if I go look inside the G-code, the Cura Slicer automatically generates this G-code highlighted in blue here based on the temperature settings we had in the slicer. M140 heats the bed to S50, 50 degrees C, and M190 says wait until it's done before moving on. Then it does M104, which is heat the hot end to 205, and M109, wait until it's done. So it does this serially. That way it doesn't pull too much power from the power supply. First it heats the bed, then it heats the hot end. But many printers can handle heating both at the same time because they have enough power in their power supply. So the idea, can we change the Cura Slicer to make it not generate this code and actually generate code that heats them both at the same time? Let's see if we can do that. If I go to Settings, Printer, Manage Printers back in Cura, I look at the standard profile we've been using, Machine Settings, there's some Start G-Code. And nowhere in this Start G-Code, let me expand it here, nowhere in here is their temperature settings. There's some acceleration at the top, there's a home, and then there's a test strip that it's going to print. So this is what they recommend for the Start G-Code, but there's nothing here that says temperature. It turns out there's a variable for both the bed temperature and print temperature. If you use those, which I'm going to add them here for start preheating and end preheating. If you use those, it will override those automatic settings. So now I'm going to come in here with the M140, only I'm going to say S instead of a number, use their variable, material bed temperature. And then I'm also going to start the hot end with an M104 for the material print temperature. So these two lines will actually start the heated bed and the hot end at the same time. And then I'll follow it up after it homes the device. It's going to M190, which says wait until the bed is heated up. And M109, wait until the hot end is heated up before moving on. So both of them have to reach their temperature before it'll move on. And then it goes and does a test strip and everything like that. So I'm going to change the profile and make a new profile with this in it. And I called it CHEP Ender 3. So I'm going to go into Machine Settings. And I go down to the star G code, and all I really did is copy and pasted it. Here you can see that section is right around where that home section was. So you can see there's the M140, M104, the G28 home, M109, and M190. So now let's use that profile, the Chep Ender 3. Everything else is the same. I'm going to slice the same Chep cube and save this to a file. Now let's look at the G code file. Up here were generated steam engine 4.3. There's no temperature settings. It goes right into our start G code. And so if I scroll further down, you can see that that start preheating is right here. But instead of the variable, it's saying S50 and S205, which is what I wanted. I want them to heat together at the same time. And then both of them wait until they're done before moving on. So instead of auto generating it, it's now using that code that was inside the start G code. So now let's actually print this and see what happens. I'll select the file we just created and right away you may notice that the hot end shows 205 degrees C and the bed shows 50 degrees C. So both of them have a set point and both of them are heating up together. And over time you'll notice, at least on my machine, that the hot end and the heated bed reach their set temperature at about the same time. So I've essentially cut my heat time in half. And once they've reached that point, a little beep, and it starts printing. 
So there you have it. Add a little star G code to your printer profile and you're ready to go. Now I've only tested this on Ender 3 which has a small bed and a pretty good sized power supply. The CR10 I haven't, but that's got a bigger bed that draws a lot more power and a rather small power supply. So I'd be a little bit worried about testing it on there, but the Ender 3 works great. Now if you like that little beep, I'll show you how I did that and added beeps to the end so it tells me when the print is complete. Let me show you how I do that. If you're curious where that little beep came from, it's right here in the startup code. M300 S1000P500 creates a little chirp to tell me that the print has started and then it does the test strip. So it's something I added right there to the startup code. Here's an example. I also like to get a little notification or a beep when the print is done. So I have a message here, M117 says print completed, and right after that it does three tones. The print completed message is really, really quick, so see if you can catch it in this example. Both of these are either in the start G code or NG code. The single chirp for starting, of course, is in the start G code. The NG code displays the print completed briefly, and then the three chirps. So both of these are in the G code, also in the start G code where I added the temperature settings to control that. All done right within Cura. I hope it helps you out. I know it helped me. I use it all the time. In fact, I have two G code files, a text file for the start G code and a text file for the NG code. I'll link to them in the description below. You can download them, open them, and then copy and paste it into your start G code, and you're ready to go.